you're doing. So as you're finding your seats, I would ask you to stand as we begin our praise and worship. Today is an upper room service. So we're going to start with some worship. We've got a word and a message. Um, and then we are going to close with some worship as well. So Father God, we just lift your name high. God, we exalt you. We come so humbly before you, so grateful for another opportunity to praise you. And God, I pray that every person who has come here this morning is coming with an expectation and a hope. God, we're all coming here with a need. And Lord God, we know that you are so faithful and good. And that you know our needs before we've even spoke them. But God, I pray that as we lay them at the foot of the cross this morning, God, that you hear our prayers, that you hear our praise. God, as we exalt you, as we sing out your name, as we declare your mighty power, God, I pray that you find it all joyful. God, I pray you find it all just a sacrifice and an offering of praise. And God, I pray that we bless you through it. In Jesus' name, amen. So feel free to stand as we start our worship this morning. Oh, but we cannot start. Hold on. <laughs>
broken because we thought we had it under control ourselves, God, and made it.
everywhere we look that we see you and that we see what you're doing. God, I pray. God, I pray that we are so confident in what you are doing that even when things don't seem to go our way, we still see Jesus and we still see your plan and your purpose. Amen. And God, I pray that we can release all that anxiety and control of not knowing how things are going to turn out because God, your plan is so good. God, this Sunday, this Veterans Day Sunday, God, we just thank you for this great nation. God, we thank you for the patriots that have gone before us. God, thank you for what they have done to lift up this nation. God, I'm so grateful that you are still a part of everything that's happening in this nation. And even when things seem bleak, and even when things seem like they are not, going the way we wanted them to go, Lord God, we know that you are still sovereign, you are still in control, and God, it does not matter who is in the presidency, it does not matter who owns the Senate or the House, God, that you, you own it all, God, you set this nation apart, you call this nation for a purpose, and God, what that purpose is, God, I pray that we, as a people, seek that purpose, God, I pray that we are not seeking politicians, but we are seeking your purpose. And that everything that will come from these midterm elections, everything that's going to come in the elections yet to come, God, that you, you are anointing it, that you are in control, and God, I pray that we, that we still cry your name and speak your name through every situation and circumstance. God, we thank you for this great nation. We thank you for the people who have gone before us and I pray for the patriots that are yet to come. I pray to the patriots that are rising through the ranks right now, God, that are going to go out and continue to defend and honor this country. God, we are so grateful for their sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing this next song, which is a uh, combination of Godless America and a hallelujah chorus. But before we do that, if you are a veteran, if you are not already standing, stand and Let's give our veterans a round of applause. Thank you.
election time and things, you know, we get stirred up, even the house of God, you know, because if you look at our voter registration cards, they say different things. You know, some say Republican and some say Democrat, some say independent, you know, um, but God has the plan for America. Amen? Amen. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world, the um, them, and they that dwell therein. And so, whatever is going on in this country, whatever is going on in our house, can we bless them? Can we bless God by blessing America? Can we be the ones who brings God's kingdom agenda to the earth? God, your kingdom come. God, your will be done should always be our prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, welcome again. Um, this is our where we salute our veteran Sunday. So thank you again for your service. I tried to reach out as many of our appointed veterans as I could. Um, so thank you again. We honor you for your service and your sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Um, and in celebration, did you have any birthdays last week? Yeah, you like to celebrate birthdays? Amen. Next Sunday. Next Sunday? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Thank you for telling Mary. Thank you. Thank you. So, Judge, happy birthday next Sunday. Yes, yes. And Austin, that's my birthday twin back there. Our birthday is Thursday. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Your birthday. Yeah, Austin, Austin and I on Thursday. Yes, we're birthday twins. So, yay, y'all. Life again should be celebrated. You know, that's what we try to do so here. So, yay, yay, yay. So, um, by way of announcements, this Thursday on my birthday, Care Group. So, for those who just need a little extra care during the week, for those who, you know, you may not feel comfortable asking questions here coming up for prayer here and you need a little, some extra during the week. John and Marla's house is the place to be on Thursday at 7 p.m. If you don't know where they live, come ask me or um, John and Marla. They know where they live, right? And um, come join us. Um, we meet in homes once a month. Um, so we have a couple of homes that are open to do that just for the refreshing um, of the Lord. So that's the 17th. And on the 20th, um, there's no church here. We're going to have um, some time with God, some time with family, um, as you devise and as, you know, however your family is led to do so. So we're going to do that. Um, but we will be back the following week, the 27th. That is going to be a community Sunday. So just come on ready to worship um, and ready to bring something to enjoy, uh, to eat, um, and just come to enjoy each other. Amen? Amen. So I just want you all to know that God I'm just sensing some anxiety and some stuff. God's got it. God's got it. God's got your marriage. God's got your finances. God's got your healing. God's got it. Amen. Amen. This Sunday is our uh, upper room service where we always learn more about the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of God. That is how God's got it. He gives us gifts to get through our everyday. And this morning we're going to learn more from our elders in our song on some of those gifts. So then you would come on up and we would just thank God for him. It's not easy to be up here, so pray for him as he comes and um, pray.
have been given the mission to reconcile all things to God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 19. I know, as usual, I'm dumping a lot of scripture. I will try to remember to put it on Facebook uh, with my references. Um, now, because Christ lives uh, in us and through us, God is able to accomplish his uh, purposes on earth through his people, which is Philippians 2.13. So we find in each of us, we find various manifestations of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Um, each person has a given gift and a role to play in the body of Christ. Now, as I was talking about earlier, Christ embodied all five of those. Most of us, the majority of us, very few of us would have all five. It's, uh, it's, we're all equipped to do various things in the so we, like I said earlier, we talk, um, the, Paul talks about the uh, fivefold ministry of Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, which I'm going to read to you right now. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And I'm reading from the ESV, which is, they, they refer to as shepherds, but that's the same as pastors. For the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So may we, we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Now, there is talk that the fivefold ministry is no longer relevant today. But that's not true. Um, it is for today. The... The, the fivefold ministry of the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are to build up the body of Christ until the body of Christ reaches unity of faith, knowledge, and is fully mature, matching the fullness of Christ. We don't have a unified church today. We've got many different denominations, many fractions within the faith. So we haven't reached that point where unity. So the fivefold ministry is very relevant to our world today. Um, Really, as, as a body, we should be growing until Christ returns. Now, what does the fivefold ministry do? Ephesians 4, 11 through 16 goes through this, but the first is equips, equips the believers for the work of service, builds up the body of believers in growth and maturity, it creates unity of faith, increases in knowledge about God, Jesus, and the kingdom, for his believers to be mature in their faith and sound doctrine, develop strong believers who are secure in their faith, matures the saints to be able to stand in the face of the challenges and deceits of the world, disciples believers into continual growth with an ever-increasing outward manifestation of love. In summary, it's a framework of growth so that we can build and mature the body of Christ. So what do the various roles mean? What's an apostle? So, an apostle is someone who awakens a believer's, um, it, it awakens their God-designed potential. Um, they're instrumental in people discovering who they really are and walking alongside of them as they go. Uh, they're pathfinders, for lack of a better term. The next is prophets. So prophets are, they reveal God's heart for his people wherever they go. They can accurately discern God's will, and they help provide experience of God's voice for the very first time with people who are learning to walk in the prophetic. Next is the evangelist, and I'll be the first to say this is my weakest point. Um, I, I, I don't feel like I have an evangelical bone in my body. The, uh, so, an evangelist is really a storyteller. It's somebody who is able to convey the story of Christ in such a manner that we're able to bring people into the faith. I mean, really, it's the core of what the church's role is, is to get people in to believe so that the other four can minister to them. Um, 
that their life is a living invitation for all to join in the family of Christ. The pastor, um, this is somebody who in the house, in, in the body, guides people through brokenness back to Christ, back to uh, healing their souls and bringing wholeness to them. Um, they create a safe atmosphere of, of family and belonging. Um, and the last is the teacher. Now, the teacher's role is to make the truth and knowledge about God accessible to all. They have an ability for breaking through confusion and misinformation, and they're strategic in helping people know the truth about God and how it applies to their own life. So uh, earlier I was talking, does everybody have a gift? And I'll tell you, there are hundreds of websites you can probably go to where you can do a test regarding the fivefold ministry, and it's a good starting point. Um, it, it, that's a place where you can go and see where you're stronger at. Maybe you do have an apostolic calling, or you have an evangelical calling. Um, but it, it never hurts to go to an independent source to try and get an idea of where you're going. And then once you kind of have an idea as to what that is, finding others who have that gifting and walking with them. Um, and do people have only one gifting? Typically, you have a couple gifts. Um, like I said, Christ is with us in spirit now, but since he no longer physically walks here, there's very few that have all five gifts. And the reality is, uh, we all hear the expression, jack of all trades, master of none. But there's some truth in that. When you're diversifying everything you're trying to focus on, if you're trying to be all five, you're not going to do any of them well. You need to focus on the two that God has, the one or two that God has instilled inside of you. Um, can your giftings change? Absolutely. I mean, it, uh, um, I never once envisioned that I would be on teaching. And apparently I'm doing more and more of it, although the comfort level is still the main You're um, doing great, Dan. Thanks. Appreciate that, Matt. Um, <laughs> And, and whenever you find out what that is, it's growing, focus on that. Um, focus on walking in that. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is, is, is the five-fold ministry a, a system of church government? In a sense, it is. It's not, I mean, when we talk about church government, we talk about elders and pastors and, and the different positions within the body. But this still gives us a framework how we want to develop all of that. Um, these roles are explicitly purpose for equipping individual believers so the body of believers is equipped for the work of service. In other words, the roles of the fivefold ministry are modeled to build up the church and grow believers. So it is, in a sense, it, uh, a sense of part of the government of how we do things. It's not necessarily the structure in which how an individual church is organized, but for the body of Christ, it is the structure that we need to go out and make disciples of others. And then... Um, and I'm uh, a little where I'm wrapping up. Um, and the last thing I'd say is this. While well, some believe uh, their giftings were so um, as an office, such as the office of apostle, and maybe more firmly to identify themselves as being apostolic, um, or one who pioneers new endeavors and grows. Similarly, one who believes uh, their gifting was so as an office of prophet, maybe more perfectly identify themselves as being prophetic or someone who reveals the heart of God, places and situations. Um, the important things in these giftings are in partnership with the Holy Spirit and that these are alive, active, and instrumental for the growth of the church. Um, summarize that, we don't need to go around saying, I'm a prophet, or I'm an apostle. You have a gifting. That doesn't mean that that's your title. That is what you do in the kingdom. Um, that's it. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh, praise the Lord. 
lover of our soul. You are our closest friend. Closer than a brother. Again, I'm so grateful that we can simply sing the I love you to you. And it changes things. It changes our attitude of worship. It changes our circumstances.
this specific set of people. And so I pray that as you're going into this next week and thinking about um, church next week, Pastor Mike and Sandy will be doing a live at some point next Sunday, so be sure to be checking Facebook for that live. They'll be doing a devotion that you can share with your families, but um, be praying in anticipation for what God can do in your own family and with your own people. And, and just know that you don't have to go to a certain place. It is good, and we should not forsake the gathering together, as Jesus said, but um, you can experience that same power in your living room with, with your own people. And if you don't have someone that you'll be with in person, grab a phone, call someone, pray with someone. And uh, it doesn't have to be for any specific duration of time or any specific words, but just be asking God to uh, to deliver a fresh anointing on you. And so as part of that, at the back table there, we have a basket. Dan's holding it up. There are communion cups in there. So please take uh, enough communion cups for your family. We would encourage you to have communion together next Sunday in your homes. And invite a friend. What a great opportunity. And uh, an opportunity for someone who maybe is not interested in stepping foot into a church building, but would come to your home and have a cup of coffee and have something to eat and, and invite someone who might need to hear about Jesus. So as we close out, I'm going to pray. If you have a prayer need, we have elders in the room, Matt, Dan, Brian, and uh, they'll be around. So please, if you have a need, please raise your hand. Um, our people will surround you and be praying over you. Father God, we just lift this time to you. We're so thankful for what you've done here this morning. God, I pray that as we go into this week, that we are we are ready to let the chains fall. God, I pray that we uh, become a people who are ready to have Jesus seep deep into our hearts. God, I pray for our children who have been in children's church. God, thank you for the workers over there who are speaking life into them. And God, I pray for our kids that they are seeing Jesus in their parents and in their relatives and in their family around them. God, I pray that they are seeing it and that they're picking up on it. God, I pray for every need that is about to be brought forth. God, if there's a need of healing, if there's a need of clarity, if there's a need to hear Jesus more, God, I pray that it's not you would hear these prayers. God, we thank you that we can come boldly before the cross. That we don't need to seek someone else to intercede on our behalf, but thank you, God, for those who are intercessors. Thank you, God, for those who do storm the gates of heaven for us. God, thank you for the people who have been gifted with the gift of prayer and pray over people with power and a certainty and a strength. Lord Jesus, when you said your yoke was easy and your burden is light, I love the imagery there, Lord, because you you put that yoke on not not to burden us, but to take it all on yourself. And yet, steering us and guiding us. So God, I pray that every person here who has a need, who's raising their hand and saying, Lord Jesus, I bring this need before you. God, I pray that they would feel that your, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And God, as we continue to pray over these people, we just